I need a cup of coffee to start off my day. I've done it before. If I don't have my coffee, ice cream. Hello everybody on YouTube and the NFL YouTube prognosticators and NFL fans everywhere. This is Andrew Warren, back here once again, giving you my thoughts for week 13 and my picks for the 2014 uh, well, 2016 NFL season for week 14, I should say. I apologize for the mix-up of that. And after the this week, after I make my picks, I'm going to do my college football bowl predictions. Well, a few games in the playoff predictions, too, so stay tuned for that. And um, time for my... Now, time for my thoughts for um, week um, week 13. Well, i got to tell you, week 13 was a crazy week. I'll definitely tell you that one right now. And my thoughts for the Thursday game with the Cowboys and Vikings. It was a really tough battle. It was a uh, back and forth game until the end. Minnesota almost uh, blew, almost came back in the end, but they ended up falling short. And they all con concerned about um, Sam Bradford was a face mask in the end, but it should have in a false start. But it should have been an offset penalty, but that didn't work out. That ended up wor working out in Dallas's favor, and Dallas ended up winning the game for that. And for that, I went 10-4, and four, by the way, and um, straight up. And, and because of that, and then Dallas was one of my victories for that. So, And that was a good win for Dallas. I mean, they're going to keep winning, I think. I think it's going to be going on. And, of course, yeah, Minnesota is not really doing good, good right now. So, Ugh. And, of course, the Falcons and Chiefs. Jeez, I got that game wrong, which I, it was a back-and-forth game for the Falcons and Chiefs. At one point, it was... Kansas City, then Atlanta, I think, started to come back. But, of course, Kansas City ended up coming in through in the end, and it couldn't turn out to be that way. But, of course, it's going to be a good... It was a good game for Kansas City. I mean, that was a Kansas City needed that really win really badly. And goes to the that Kansas City won. Sure enough. And, of course, the 49ers and Bears. The Bears looked like... the They were like world beaters against the 49ers. But who would be if they are playing San Francisco right now? I mean... Now San Francisco's got battling for the number two seed, while well, Cleveland's going to be getting number one, probably. But, you know, who am I to judge for that? But, you know, hey. But, you know, but that goes to show you, I think Chicago is, I think the, finally they're probably going to get the answer they're looking for. What's the problem for Chicago? It's Jay Cutler. And I hope for their sake they dump Jay Cutler finally. Maybe they get some answers for, um, what, <laughs> For Chicago, I mean, finally dump Jay Cutler. I think that's the problem for him. Maybe they'll start winning games. I'm about to get the third seed right now. Maybe they won't look for another quarterback. Who knows? But, you know, maybe it goes to show you that Chicago finally woke up. But, hey, whatever. But anyways, for um, the Bengals and Eagles, it kind of showed you that Carson Wentz needs help. And I think they're going to get help on the wide receiver position. And I think that's the problem for Philadelphia right now is they have a lack of wide receivers right now. And Carson Wentz needs help on that one. I think they got a good quarterback right now. I just need they need wide receiver help. And I think that's going to be the problem. And it goes to show you that was the problem against Cincinnati last weekend. So I go, I go to show you that um, that um, the Philadelphia needs a little help on the offensive side of the ball really well. So maybe they can work on that. And so maybe you know, we'll see how they do them at that point. But it goes to show you that Philadelphia needs, Carson Wentz needs help on the offense. Really needs help. Offense and tight end positions. So maybe they'll get something going this coming offseason. Maybe we'll do something. Who knows? But well, we got to see. But for the Packers and Texans, I say this, Green Bay is back and back in a flash. You know, I told you never bet against Aaron Rodgers again. And look what happened. They beat Houston, like, by eight. So, hey, I mean, I could take that any day of the week straight up for that, and no problem for it. Aaron Rodgers looked like Aaron Rodgers again, and I'm surely grateful for that. So, and of course, some of you, the people in the NFC North who are fans of the Vikings, Bears, and the Lions are not happy about that. So, but anyways, but it goes to show you that Aaron Rodgers looked like Aaron Rodgers again, and looks like they're going to, Aaron Rodgers said he got it. And he's and he got it. Well, let me fix my camera a bit. Let me see. Oh, I'm sorry about that. There you go. More like it. Anyways, and the um, Saints and Rams. 
I gotta tell you this. I expected to be a blow up from my New England Patriots, and I'm happy for the win. But at the same time, it's a little disappointing for the Rams what they're doing right now. And now, what I heard recently over the weekend, that Jeff Fisher got a two year extension. And my only question is, why the hell did he get a two year extension, which he didn't even do crap for the Rams for the last few years? I should say the last four years is all. Then he gets a two year extension. It goes to show you, I don't think the Rams care about winning at all. I really don't. Or they just don't have no interest in in anything anymore. So I mean, it pretty much goes to show you for that. Ugh. Two year extension for Jeff Fisher. And this is a coach. He hasn't been in the playoffs since 2008, may I remind you. 2008. And. And I just, and just like, what's he doing these days? I mean, and the, remember the last playoff win he ever gotten was in 2003 when he beat Baltimore 20 to 17. And of course, he ended up losing to my New England Patriots in, in the division round that year. And Steve McNair was the legendary Steve McNair was the quarterback at that time. And Eddie George was running back. And, and I don't get, I don't get what Jeff Fisher is doing these days. Apparently, he could have had his career ended in 2010 and be over and done with, but no. He ended up blowing his, possibly blowing his chance to be in the Hall of Fame because of what he's doing with the Rams. Pretty much. Well, maybe he would have been a Hall of Fame ballot, not in the first ballot right away. Maybe he would have been there third or fourth time around if he was still a didn't leave the Tennessee Titans head coach in position or something like that. But anyways, definitely not a Hall of Fame coach now. Definitely not. But whatever. But you know, that's my take about the Patriots and in, in the Rams game, but we all expected the pay, the my New England Patriots to be killing killing the Rams like they did. So and it goes to show you that it it's definitely a loss without Rob Gronkowski. Definitely needs help, but it, Martini has Bennett is definitely helping us out for that. And I strongly suggest, but I don't think the Patriots will. Because they you know, always attack the defense. Always need help on that defensive side. But they should franchise tag Martini as Bennett. I think that's what they should do. But anyways. or And if they're not going to do that, they're probably going to do that with Dante Hightower. But anyways. Moving on. Saints and the Lions, I gotta say that was one of the most disappointing games of the year, I think. I expected that game to be a shootout, but that didn't turn out to be that way. It turned out to be in the Lions' favor, and it was just, it was just a living nightmare for the Saints, and it was just not looking good for the Saints or Drew Brees in that offense. Matthew Safford outgunned, um, outscored, I should say, um, Drew Brees in any ways, and it just it wasn't really disappointing the way I looked. It was a 28 to 13 victory for the Lions, but not how I expected it to be. I expected it to be a high-scoring game, and it didn't turn out to be that way. And, of course, um, Saints and the Jaguars. I expected the... I mean, excuse me, the Broncos and Jaguars. I expected the Broncos to just dominate the Vikings, but it didn't turn out to be that way. It turned out to be a low-scoring game, and that was not what I expected either. But, you know, the, I expected the it'd be a little more scoring for the for the Broncos on offense, but, you know, it didn't turn out to be that way. It ended up being a defensive battle most of the game, which it was all right. I mean, fine, but, you know, Jacksonville needs help. Then. I mean, Jacksonville's... Ugh. This is how I'm going to think. Jacksonville... Uh, Blake Bortles is an interception machine. That's how I feel about it. I mean, even though it's still young, but, you know... Six interceptions, I mean, come on. He's an interception machine right now. This is not how you want for a for for your franchise quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars, pretty much. But the Allens are still good wide receivers. Don't get me wrong, but Blake Bortles is not the guy. I should say, or at least he needs more experience, or at least to get a better coach, like than Gus Bradley, or I should say. But anyways, moving on. Ravens and Dolphins. I mean, don't get me wrong. I knew the Ravens were going to win, but not. This bad. Does it go to show you that the Miami Dolphins are overrated? Did it go to show you about that? Or the Ravens are just for real in the NFC North? I mean, this goes to show you for that. And I'm sure some people I know 
Our Dolphins fans are not going to be too thrilled about how they played and whatever. But, you know, but Ryan Tannehill looked like Ryan, the Ryan Tannehill I was used to seeing. Simple as that. But, anyways, whatever. Simple as that, but, you know, I don't know how they're going to do this coming week for the Dolphins, but we'll wait and see. And for the Bills and Raiders, I expected the Bills to upset the Raiders in this game, but that didn't turn out to be that way, but, cause Sammy Watkins was coming back, and, you know, I thought there were, it was going to Buffalo side in that, but it didn't turn out to be that way. The second, first half looked pretty good for Buffalo, but the second half, they, a new team just came in, and then Derek Carr looked like Derek Carr, he just throwing darts at, on the field for Oakland, and they came back strong in the second half for Oakland, and Oakland won the game by two touchdowns. Just a sad way for Buffalo to end, but at the same time, a little happy just to see Rex Ryan lose. I'm just happy to see that. That makes me just, makes me put a smile on my face any day. If my New England Patriots or any team be, beats Rex Ryan. It goes to show you anyway, Rex Ryan's not a good coach. <laughs> That's my take. Anyways, Cardinals and Redskins. I Don't get me wrong, I mean, the Cardinals... Or one of the most disappointing teams so far, but they needed a win bad, and they and they got the win over the Redskins, and because of that, Dallas got the playoff berth for the for the um, for the Dallas Cowboys. I, it's not the NFC East, I think, but it's just a, a playoff berth for them. They I think Dallas is the first team to clinch a playoff berth this in this coming weekend. So congrats to Dallas on that. So um, I give him I give him my hat, I give him my respect for that. What um, Ezekiel Elliott and Dirk Pers- Dirk Persinski had done. So, hey. But anyways, because of that win for the Cardinals in, in the Redskins loss, the Dallas is in the playoff, in the playoffs picture right now. So, and the Redskins thought they were going to have a chance to come back, but it didn't turn out to be that way. But anyway, Steelers and Giants. I expected the Steelers to dominate the, the New York Giants, but they won by 10, but they did dominate though, but the problem was the, the, the Steelers didn't, the Steelers' defense, they didn't, they just gave the Giants a touchdown, which it didn't matter anyway, but still. If you want to win a ball game, you gotta shout out the deep defense, too, but, you know, just give them the points, but, you know, I mean, the game was pretty much over anyway, but. Anyways, the Chargers, the Chargers and Bucks, I gotta say this. Who the hell are these Buccaneers? Who are they? They could just steal the, the NFC South away from the Falcons, or they just could um, just get the wild card picture. Either way, they may get the wild card. But who are these uh, Buccaneers? Who are they? That's all I gotta ask. I mean, they're talking about getting a ch- and, and, and the NFC South, or they're getting a wild card team. Maybe, this is gonna be an interesting team coming up, maybe in the future for the Buccaneers. Maybe in the other, in maybe in the next few years, maybe Cam Newton and, and the Panthers have, in the Saints and the in Drew Brees has some. Answers and Matt Ryan too. And the Falcons may have an answer coming up for the Buccaneers. So I gotta say that they um uh, shut down the Chargers when they needed to, and they did. And that was just a surprise for that. And anyways, so the Sunday night football game. And speaking of the Panthers, I had just had that feeling that the Panthers will lose, but I didn't expect them to be lose this badly, like forty to seven or like that. But I think that's pretty pathetic for the Panthers. I think I think this is a uh, Pan- I think the Panthers are out of the playoff picture now. I think they look like they're gonna be out of it, but I think they need this coming off season when they do it, when they're gonna take a look in the mirror, see what happened in that in that season, and go through it. But I said this in my divisional, in my AFC and NFC South picks, Super Bowl hangover. I said that, and I knew the Panthers weren't gonna get that division. I just knew it. But anyways, um, back to, in under the Monday Night Football game. For the Colts and Jets, Andrew Luck looked like Andrew Luck. Again, I definitely will tell you that one right now, but they still need an offensive tackle or a defensive lineman for the Colts right now to help to help out to make them back to the NFC South pitcher, which I think it's kind of hit and miss about the NFC South, the AFC South, but it's still up for grabs. But, you know, the Colts needed a win, and they needed to. So, good for them. Anyways, on to my week 12 picks. Let's get, I mean, a week 14, week 14 picks, excuse me, and let's get this started. Checking out the Thursday night game, the Raiders and Chiefs. The Chiefs are at home, but the Raiders are on the road. The 
Raiders have been good on the road this year instead of at home. And I and the Raiders are, I believe they're an underdog in this game. Last time I heard like a three point underdog. But I gotta roll with an upset pick in this game. I'm picking the Raiders over the Chiefs in Arrowhead. I think they can pull this one off on Thursday night. It's gonna be a hell of a game to watch. I'll be looking forward to that on Thursday. Steelers and Bills. I definitely like the Steelers over the Bills any day. Any team that Rex Ryan's on up, I like them any day. Hmm. Well, in some cases. But this case, I like Pittsburgh over Buffalo. The Battle of Ohio, Cleveland and Cincinnati. I like Cleveland over, I like, excuse me, I like Cincinnati over Cleveland. Lions and Bears. I, it's a divisional game, it's gonna be a tough one, even though it's Chicago. I like the Lions over the Bears. Broncos and Titans. I like Denver over Tennessee. Colts and Texans, a battle of the NFC South. I think the winner of this game will get the NFC South. I can, I can tell you that one right now. And I think that's going to go with the Indianapolis Colts. I like the Colts over the Texans. Cardinals and Dolphins. I think Cardinals are going to start to wake up. I like the Cardinals over the Dolphins. The Dolphins look like they're not the same Dolphins we saw in the six-game winning streak. So I like... The Cardinals over the Red, over the, over the Dolphins. Redskins and Eagles, the Battle of the NFC East. It's always a classic showdown, always the interesting ones. And I like the Redskins over the Eagles. They're gonna take the frustration down on Philadelphia. And Carson wins, needs time to give him time. And I think Philadelphia would be good again with Carson wins. Anyways, Panthers and Chargers. I gotta say this, I was rolling with Carolina with this, now I see it's what's going on with Carolina, now it's whatever going on with Carolina. I like San Diego over Carolina. And of course, I like the and the Vikings and Jaguars. Vikings, I like the Minnesota Vikings defense over Jacksonville's offense and the defense any day. I like Minnesota over Jacksonville. Falcons and Rams, I'm picking the Falcons over the Rams. The Rams don't don't have an answer anymore, so I'm just picking the Buc- Falcons over the Rams. Buccaneers and Saints, an NFC South uh, divisional showdown. I like the Bucks over the Saints. And for the Sunday night football game, the Cowboys and Giants. Here's why I look at this game: the Cowboys, uh, the only loss was against the New York Giants, in in um and at, at the Meadowlands, but they're playing in Dallas. I think. A little revenge is going to be on Dallas's mind. I like Dallas over the New York Giants. And for the Sunday night football game, for the Patriots and Ravens at my New England Patriots in Foxborough, it's at home. I like our chances at home for this game. I like my New England Patriots over Baltimore in this game. And sorry, Matt, the NFL fanatic. I know you're a Ravens fan, but I had to pick my New England Patriots in this game. So, and plus... Which I gave him a shout out for this week. I definitely give him a, and definitely um, check his videos out too. By the way, he he makes really good videos. Or he does really good against the spread. And he makes thoughts about every game. Just check his videos out. He's a really good guy, and he does a good job. And till then, I'll see you all in my um, college um uh, football predictions. And welcome back, everybody. And now for my college football, NCAA football bowl predictions. I'm going to do some bowl games. I'm going to do um, the playoff, NCAA football playoff uh, uh, predictions. So anyways, the Orange Bowl prediction. Number 6, Michigan versus um, number 11, FSU. I like Michigan over um, FSU 28-25. And the Cotton Bowl, number 8, Wisconsin over... um, West over West Michigan, I like Wisconsin forty-one to ten. In the in the Rose Bowl, when Penn State uh, versus um, USC, Penn State is probably not happy about they're not in the playoff picture. They're gonna take their frustration on in USC. I like Penn State over USC twenty-seven to twenty. And personally, I hope they beat USC because I hate USC with a passion. And of course, the uh, no in the Sugar Bowl. It's uh, number 14, Auburn, and Oklahoma. Number 7, Oklahoma. 
I like the upset pick on this one. It's hard to pick an SEC teams, by the way. And it and I like all number fourteen Auburn over the Oklahoma twenty eight to twenty five also. And of course the playoff pitcher. Number one Alabama, number two Ohio State, and number um three um Clemson and number four Washington. And it's gonna be number one at the Peach Bowl, number one Alabama versus um number four Washington. I think Washington is really happy to be there. They're like they're excited to be at the playoff pitcher. They haven't been in the around the ranked teams in a little while, and pretty much a long time. And I think they were, I think they were banned from a uh, from bowl games for a little while too, for like college communication or um, like they broke an NCAA football rule or something like that. But anyways, I think for this case, they're just happy to be there. I, I don't expect. I'm I'm not gonna lie. I'm on Washington's bandwagon, but. It's hard to bet an SEC team like Alabama too, and like I mentioned in the Sugar Bowl, um, Auburn and and Florida Gators are like that. But you know, I gotta go with Alabama with this one. They have the experience. I gotta go with Alabama over Washington in the Peach Bowl, thirty four seventeen. In the Fiesta Bowl, Ohio State versus Clemson. I don't think it's gonna be last year's rematch. I believe it's gonna Ohio State is in for. Because after the game I saw against Michigan a few weeks ago, they look like they're a team of destiny to win something. And I like Ohio State over Clemson, 39-33 to in overtime. And of course, for the championship game, I got Ohio State versus Alabama. And don't get me wrong, no, um, I like Ohio State. They can work the magic. And it's going to be a tough one. But if there's, a, but if there's going to be a team that can give Alabama a run for their money, it's Ohio State. I'm picking them as an upset pick. My final score in that game, 34-30. to 30. And there you go. Those are my um, my um some of my college football predictions. Shoutouts for the week. Um, Hatbox and Billy B. And may I remind you, I want to wish um, Hatbox a big happy birthday. His birthday's today. If, and check out their channels out. I got to get their link down below on the NFL YouTube prognosticator page. Please link the him and definitely give you a shout-out. I uh, did give, try to give everybody shout-outs as much as I can. But, you know, I'll definitely leave the link down below. Our NFL YouTube prognosticator page is growing. It's growing every day. And I'm, and I feel like we're gonna, you know, our community is gonna get bigger and bigger as the years go by. And I do believe that. And please check out their other, all of our other, um, NFL YouTube prognosticator page. And of course, um, and don't forget to wish Billy, I mean, um, Hatbox a big happy birthday. And of course, my other shout out is New Jack. And check out his videos too. He does college football and football, uh, NFL predictions too. He does M- the NBA and the NCAA basketball tournaments in March. So definitely check out his videos out cool. He's a really good guy. He's a really good prognosticator. And he, his videos are smooth like butter, like I said before. And it definitely is now. Definitely check out his videos. And until then, I'll see you all in week 15 picks. This is Andrew Warren signing off. Peace.